Okay, I'll start. Um, hi everyone. Welcome to Discover Economics' 2023 Black History Month event. My name is Anu and I will be your host slash panelist for the event today. And um, I'll probably start with just a bit about Discover Economics, which is essentially a campaign to promote economics to, um, to a more diverse group of people. And a little bit about myself and my journey. My, like I said, my name is Anu Adenuga. I have an undergraduate degree in economics from the University of Buckingham, and I have a postgraduate degree in information systems and digital innovation from the London School of Economics. So more technology-based, um, a more technology-based master's. I started my career as a communications officer, actually, here at Discover Economics, where I did that while I did my master's. And then after that, I moved towards, I moved into the tech sector because I really wanted to work in tech and I wanted to work in a role that would combine my master's degree, which was in information systems, but economics as well. So I am a tech consultant at a company called Appian. And what I do there is digital transformation projects. So I go into companies, listen to how their business runs and then propose digital solutions for a problem they would have essentially. So that's my day job. In, in addition to that, I'm also a founder of a brand called Black Girl Money, where I promote financial um, understanding for Black women. And yeah, so that's a bit about me. Today, I am joined by David and Lotana, who I will let them tell you about themselves in a minute. But just before that, I know we have a slight poll that should come up on your screens. Okay. So, okay. I'll give uh, five seconds just to do that. Okay. So I think everyone should have gotten the poll. And while you're doing that, I will just run through how the event today will go through. We would have David, Latana, and I would have a discussion about economics and our career journeys. And after that, we'll have a question and answer session. So please put your questions in the question and answer box in the comments box, whatever questions you have as we go along. And hopefully we can pick some of that up as um, more at the end of the event. So I will pass on to David. Do you want to give us a bit about yourself? All right. Thank you very much, Tanya. Um, I, can, I guess I can do a short intro first and then that I can go and I guess after that we can get deeper into conversation. Mm -hmm. So hi everyone, thanks for thanks for being here. My name is David. I am currently a PhD student at the University of Bristol, um, and I also work as an economist at a data consultancy um, based in Nigeria called Stairs. So I work remotely um, for that. So a bit of background: I started my economics career, at least in my undergrad level at the University of Bristol. So I've come full circle. Um, so I started at the University of Bristol with my undergrad in economics around 10 years ago. And then after that, I did a master's in economics at the London School of Economics. And then I went to work at the UK government as, a, as an economist. I'm going to keep saying the word economic and, uh, economics and economists many times. Um, so yeah, I worked at the UK government uh, for a few years. I specifically worked at the Department for International Trade, where we basically worked on um, thinking about what the UK would do after Brexit um, when, it, when it comes to signing trade agreements with different countries. And we can go into more specifics about what that means later. But I worked as, a, as an economist at the government. And then after that, I moved back to Nigeria and I worked um, as, as an economist, as a consultant as well. Um, at, at, at this company stairs that I currently work for. And there I got the opportunity to just basically work with different public sector institutions and private sector institutions to help them figure out answers to their problems. Um, so that was that was me, my, my, my professional career. And then I've come back into academia and I'm now studying a PhD in economics at the University of Bristol where it all started. Um, so yeah. Nice to meet you all. I guess when 
after which we can go into more detail about the different steps I took and, and all that's happened on, on the journey here. But yeah, I'll pass it on to Lotana. All right, thank you, David. Uh, it's good to see uh, to be in this program. Um, I want to just give a brief introduction of myself. So I'm Lutana, and I, unlike uh, Anu and uh, David, I think I didn't start out as an economist. Uh, I started out as a as a scientist in terms of uh, my early career. So I um, I had my first diploma in science laboratory technology or what you could call medical medical biochemistry uh, but in terms of progressing moving further to kind of complete the study i somehow i can't know i, I, I mean maybe when we go further into the discussion we'll talk about that so, you know i had some motivation to kind of switch completely to economics and i had to abandon the uh, and I was doing very well in my science course. I, I was I was on top of the class. So it, it was not it was not as if I was performing poorly and then I needed to do something else. No. So I was doing very well. Uh, but I just fell in love with economics, <clears throat> you know, and I decided to quit sciences and go into the social sciences. And then that was how I started the journey of an, you know, becoming an economist. I went back to the university, do my first degree in economics in Nigeria at the University of Benin. And then after that, I got a scholarship to the University of Manchester to do a master's in financial economics, where uh, I, I, I excelled. And then I was given a further scholarship to take it up to a, for a PhD level. And then I continued with a PhD in economics. And I, I graduated a couple of years ago. And today, I'm a senior lecturer in economics at the University at the Manchester Metropolitan University at the Department of Finance and Economics. Uh, so that's been a synopsis of my journey. And like David, maybe we can dig deeper when the time comes to um, shed more light. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you, Lutana. So that is a little bit about us. And we can, we can probably just dive right in. So as we know, it is Black History Month. That's why we're here. And one of the big themes that I find most back every year that we talk about at this time of year is kind of breaking barriers and so my question to you and I will answer this at the end as well is can you share any insights over the course of your career from your academic journey to your professional careers where you've had um, to break a barrier or there's been a barrier experience that you've had where you've had to maybe do something extra to break it or yeah, just what barriers have you experienced throughout your career? Some diving right in. <laughs> Do you want to? Uh, okay, I, 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 I can start. Um, so what I would say is, I think the what has been most prominent throughout my both academic and professional career in terms of anything close to a barrier is more being on the side of lack of people who are like similar to me um, in terms of looks, but also in terms of thoughts as far as role models. So teachers, um, you know, managers in the office and and that. So I think it's more been a case of, I mean, I'm, I'm, apart from the fact that, you know, at LSE doing my master's, I was the only, you know, black person in, in, in my class. So apart from those types of, I guess, um, those types of constraints or those types of um, um, situations. I think the one thing that just always hits me was just um, the lack of the lack of other people who are similar to me that I could look up to and say like, okay, so you're there, like you know, I'm, I, I'm wanting to get there as well. Um, I, I think the, the part that, you know, I think is important to think, to deal with is the impact that has on diversity of thought. So it's not it's not just about, oh, there needs to be someone who looks like me there because they look like me. It's also because of the diversity of thoughts that someone who has my background could bring to the table. So, you know, take economics, for example. You know, there are different parts of economics that could do with people from different backgrounds coming together to figure out the solution to a problem. And so I think that's... The, in the office, for example, when I was working at the UK government, you know, bringing in that view, you know, when we're trying to do trade deals with developing countries or doing trades with other countries, um, other advanced countries that are not that are not um British, for example, the diversity of thought of how different countries 
experience different impacts or how different countries um, see things differently was very important. And so I think that's probably one of the main things that I that I I think I faced just you know trying to improve that diversity of thoughts through having people from different backgrounds um, making decisions. For example, even making like lecture notes um, or like making you know big decisions in the office. So I I say that's probably like the main thing that I that I experienced. Yeah, I completely agree. Cognitive diversity, I think I agree with you, is a huge factor to, I think, better policies, better implementation. And even in my career, because I like with my experience with this question is I because I right now I work in the intersection of technology and economics, I would say. And the I, the barriers that I've seen in particularly my professional life have been different to my academic life. So my academic, when I was in school, I would say very similar to you. I had those experiences where I was the only one that looked my, like me, whether it was the fact I was female or it was the fact that I was a black female. So I was always a minority in that. And the, the learning environment you're in sometimes can Every, can me like everyone has one perspective and I was always the one on the other perspective or I was always the one saying how about we consider it from this way simply because I have different experiences that I was able to bring into the room so I can only imagine how that goes up from school to jobs to policy to macroeconomic policy around the world so I completely agree and I think more in my professional life um the barriers I see is I have to be my own advocate a lot of the time. So, because there's not a lot of people who, don't get me wrong, I have great advocates in at just different points in my profession. I've had great advocates at different points in my professional life, but I've also found sometimes I'm, I enter a room and I have to be the person that gets other people who look like me into the room. That was one of the reasons I started Black Girl Money was because I started learning about finance, money, economics, and I found not a lot of people who look like me either chose to study economics, knew the benefits of economics or knew about finance or uh, money. So that was a huge factor or one of the barriers that I feel like I've experienced in my career, but it's far much better now from when I started, I would say. Um, yeah, so Latana, do you wanna add? Um, yeah, I, I mean, it's definitely not very different from what uh, yourself and David has uh, highlighted, uh, but let me just add a, a, a kind of a, um, a thread to it. <clears throat> I mean, I both of you. I think uh, because you kind of did your uh, first degree year, it's easier than for me that came from abroad to do my second degree year. Yeah, because I did my first degree in 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 Africa, and of course, uh, the way education in Africa is um, being uh, meted out, the way education in Africa is being carried out is completely or in a way different from what we've seen here. So uh, like I said, I I came in here for my master's after finishing my uh, undergraduate and being the only black student in my program, then the MSc Financial Economics. And I was, I was struggling to kind of uh, blend, culturally speaking, uh, I, I was struggling to blend um, environmentally speaking in terms of the weather because I was just coming from a temperate region sorry from a tropical area to a temperate region uh beyond that also in terms of uh, trying to uh understand the the intonation the the way the white the British speak because most of my lecturers happen to be British and then Asians so trying to kind of understand the way they speak the fastness of their of their speech, the, the the speed of their speech kind of makes me, I was like, are you sure I'm really going to pass this, <laughs> this program? Because everything looks totally different from where I'm coming from. But I had one year to, in fact, I had less than one year to adjust because we're going to write exam within three months and everything. So, uh, so it was quite a big challenge, the cultural barrier, the cultural shock, the uh, environmental shock, everything was it was kind of a big barrier. And I had colleagues that had come in the past years that couldn't complete the program because they couldn't cope, they couldn't adjust. Uh, but I was determined that I was going to make it. It's that determination, that desire, that determination <clears throat> that you can do it, no matter what the, the situation lies. So I made use of all the resources the university had to provide. 
everything the university. I went for I went for uh, uh remedial classes. I think of all my colleagues, I was the one that frequented the the lecturers most in terms of using their office hours to ask questions. Almost after every course, they will see me because um, the curriculum also are different. You know, um, the the curriculum from what we, where I used to know is quite different from what is being taught here, and I needed to quickly acclimatize. So every lecture is new to me, so I had to make use of the office hours. I had to go, and the lecturers were quite kind enough to assist me, and also I had to make friends with those that know. Uh, what they are doing in the class. I didn't know much because uh, there were those that like David and Anu that had done their undergraduate year. So they know all the subjects, they know the terrain. So I needed to kind of make friends with them, not people of my color, not black, I mean, but it doesn't matter. I only wanted to get something from them. And they were able to, so when an assignment comes, we have the group work and they put me through. And just by rubbing minds with them and moving with those that are able to, uh, able to kind of um, uh, lead and explain to me in better in better ways, I was able to make it. And I didn't only make it, like I said, I made it top. Uh, so it's a matter of determination. There will always be those challenges, whether in terms of, you know, being the only Black person or just in terms of incompatibility or disparity in one way or the other. But with shared determination and uh, the desire to succeed, I, I was able to work through yeah. Yeah, I mean, and now you're a senior lecturer, so it worked. <laughs> yours, it worked out. Um, okay, that's that. That's. I think we all have similar experiences in that as well. So, I'll, the next question I have for the panel is more on economics in particular. So, one of the biggest reasons that might I learned that when I was working at Discover Economics was that the reason there's not as many the economics in the UK particularly is not as diverse so there's not many female or um, ethnic minority economists compared to their counterparts counterparts is because there's a misconception there's a huge misconception that economics is just money finance essentially accounting so my question to the panel is I know you work as you've worked in a consultancy and you've worked with data David and Lotana I'm sure you teach different parts of economics when you teach it as well and I work in tech. So I would say not just in your current professional role over the course of your careers, but how do you how have you used economics that is not the stereotypical money finance? And um like what difference does it make in your role and how does economics play into what you do on a day-to-day day-to-day basis that's different to just like banking? Yeah, I mean, thank you, Hanu. If I can go first, that'll be fine. Uh so uh I think the I've had a couple of interaction with um, college students as well as high school students, and where I go to talk about economics and uh, to, uh, to you know, students in underrepresented areas. And when I talk about economics, like you rightly pointed out, the first thing that comes to their mind is oh, money, bank, and and yeah, I mean, you, that's just one out of the many sides of economics. Economics is multifaceted. Uh, for example, like I said, I did my master's in financial economics, uh, which you could tie to some of those things. But for my PhD, I did something different. And that is about the environment, environmental economics, resource economics. That's what I did, where you kind of think about how you how you use the society resources to answer societal problems. So you talk about problems like climate change, problems like land degradation, problems like oil spillage, mining problems like a, a global warming this are this doesn't have to do with bank this doesn't have to do with money but this has to do with nature and we have to manage the problem that nature presents to us ability to man and economics is basically and it's just to put it in perspective so an economist basically uh uses society resources to hands to manage so i mean uses society's uh resources to, to manage society resources, that uses society resources to kind of optimize and solve problems, whatever the problem may be, whether it's problem about um, homelessness, uh, problem about sleeping rough, you know, where you have problem about developing the developing world, where you have the development economics, where you talk about development and problems in the developing countries, whether it's problem about um, um, work and pension, 
why how should we take care of our pensioners where you have the labor economics whether it's education economics how should a child be educated whether it's health economics how much should we pay for our health so there are if anything anything that has resources in it an economist is always found there. And that's why um, in terms of my work, my research, I've worked across a different branch of economists. I've done research on health economics. I've done research on food economics. I've done research on environmental economics, on agricultural economics, on development economics, on resource economics. I've done research on, on urban economics, on regional economics. So there are basically, economics is just a, a bare amount of ideas. Anywhere that you have resources, then an economist can uh, can feature this. So it's just far, far, far beyond money and banking and stuff like that. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, Tana. So you've had experience in so many different um, facets of economics. So that's really interesting to hear. David? Sure. Yeah, no, I, I, it, it would be nice if like the Discover Economic team could actually count how many times we say the word economics on this call. <laughs> I think Lotana probably reached like 30 to 40. <laughs> On that, on that message. Actually, a disclaimer, before I answer that question, a disclaimer. Um, so when we're talking about, you know, diversity in economics, I have to say that it has improved significantly in the last, at least since when I started 10 years ago. So I do not expect that anyone would go to university, at least at the undergrad level, and get to a position where they're like the only black person in the economic class. I would really, really be surprised by that. So even I at Bristol, in my undergrad, you know, we were at least four or five. So I had my crew and I had my group and I could find generally at university, like you would not have, you know, issues finding people who are similar to you um, in the university. And, and I, even within economics, I think, um, I, like I said, I would be surprised if, if that was the case at undergrad level. I think the higher you go up in terms of academia and, and, and all of that, then the numbers may reduce, but but things are definitely a lot better. So just to a disclaimer, it's not the case that you go to uni and you know there are no there are no black people studying economics. Um cool. So 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 on on what economics is, so just like Lotana said, I think to even go further than saying economics about resources, and I think I said this last time I, I did this call, I fully believe that economics is just about people. So anywhere or anything that any problems or any challenges that people as a, us as a society have that we're trying to deal with, there's an economist there trying to solve it. So, I mean, interestingly, money, like the topic money, barely even gets taught in, in any undergrad um, undergrad course. You may do stuff like interest rates and, you know, finance sector, but, but like money itself, you really have to be very specialized um, to get to talking about money from an economic perspective. But you are going to definitely talk about like, you know, the labor market, you're going to talk about the macro economy, you're going to talk about businesses, you know, you know, you're going to talk about, um, you know, like Lotana said, the, the, the development, there's health. I think the NHS is like one of the biggest recruiters of economics. You know, I worked in the government and every single department, whether I was education, whether I was, uh, you know, energy, whether I was, I was an in international trade, you know, foreign office as well has many, many economists. So, there are economists everywhere, whether it's Uber, Amazon, Google, Facebook, you, Spotify, you know, the head of chief economist at Spotify recently came to Bristol to talk, not recently, last year came to Bristol to talk um, to the students here. So like, if you like music, there's economics in there for you, right? So I think, you know, I even know economists being recruited at TikTok, you know, so they're everywhere. Um, so that's, that's, that is one big misconception. I'm glad that things like Discover Economics are out there to, to show people that or give people the opportunity to see that economics is a lot more more than that. And I, like I said, I think it is about fundamentally helping people. You know, when I worked at the UK government at international trade, we were asking questions like, okay, if we if we if we, if we to put it more simply, if we became closer to Australia and did more trade with Australia and imported goods from Australia, what impact does that have on UK consumers or Australian consumers? What impact does that have on you know, um, UK producers of the same of, of the goods and services that Australia also provides. So it you know, all to what is the impact on the on the on, on the everyday people. Um, you know, people go to the supermarket today and you see stuff like a range of fruit from all parts of the world. Like that's there because of things like international trade, and that's an economic concept. So 
you know, the theme really for, for economics in general is for me has always been that economics is about people and, you know, trying to solve problems and push us, push society further and trying to help us improve on the resources that we have, you know, right now, environmental economics is becoming a big deal because we are trying to solve this, you know, the environmental problem. So almost no matter what your interest is, if you're down to solving problems and you like thinking about how people behave, you know, there's even behavioral economics, right? Um, if, you're, if you're interested in people and solving problems, like economics is definitely the way to go. I'm not being biased. At least I think I'm not. <laughs> I completely agree with you, David and Latana. And I think for me, working in technology, I've realized there's there's enterprise technology doesn't work if there isn't deep understanding or some level of understanding of economic concepts, particularly of how like a firm works in designing technologies for businesses. So what I do on a day-to-day basis as a consultant is I'm constantly moving through different projects for different clients and helping them, like um, helping them suggest a new form of technology and how they will implement that form of technology. And in order for me to do my job, my economics degree comes in very handy because every time I move into a new client, I have to understand the macroeconomic landscape in which the company exists in. So I need to understand if I'm working for a public sector, a public sector client, I need to understand where does this fit in government? Where does this company fit in the government's macroeconomic goals? And why do they have these goals? And then simmer that down to now this piece of technology can help achieve this this bigger goal that a company has. So I find in the job, in my day-to-day basis, I do you do need some technical skills in what I do but a huge part of it is problem solving and economic problem solving. So to me, what has what always fascinated me about economics and why I studied it in the first place was because of just the amount of careers you can go into. Just economics is one of those, I think, degrees that it's like a key that just opens a thousand different doors. <laughs> like Latana mentioned, whether you want to go into behavioral economics or you want to go into technology or maybe if you want to go into finance or if you want to go into environmental economics it's just a key that opens so many doors on what you want to specialize in and I think for me because when you think of technology the first thing you're thinking in your head isn't economics but working in it now there's so many intersections in every company that you every institution like you said David needs economists because it's one of, I remember the first things I was taught in my economics degree was fundamentally it is we live in a world where we have unlimited wants but limited resources so just that simple basic concept you can take and put it into any environment whether it's a company whether it's a environmental company where they want to plant so so many trees but they have to work with certain regulation or it could be microeconomics with a simple family where mom and dad make this much and we have to allocate this for the family so just I think economics just doesn't also help professionally it's just a very fascinating understanding or realm to understand the world and apply into just so many different parts of it so yeah so economics is I agree with you I think I had one module which was called money banking and finance in my whole three-year degree so that is um what I would say. So I, yeah. Okay. So I'll ask one more question and then hopefully we have some questions from the audience. So if we answer the next one quickly, so we have some time to answer some audience questions. I would say, what advice would you give a young person looking to go into like your career, what you do? Okay, uh, let me also start, uh, if that's fine. Yeah, so um, the one thing I just want to say, which is also, I mean, it's just a follow-on from what we've discussed, the last discussion, that if you really want to be a problem solver, then uh, I think economists, uh, and there are problems everywhere, you know, 
there are lots of problems, whether it's uh, the ongoing conflict in, in the in the Middle East or in Ukraine. Uh, we have economies that are thinking about how to you know solve the problem in terms of uh, maximizing the resources. And if you're thinking about clean hair, we have limited clean hair due to the pollutions everywhere. And you're thinking of how to solve that problem using data. Economists, we use data to solve problems. So we use data to analyze problems and then to suggest solutions for solving. And that's why you see most advisors to governments, most advisors to uh, in top uh, top uh, international businesses are economists, you know, because they kind of understand how to use data to kind of analyze the problem and then present a potential solution. So one um, advice I would give is that if you're interested in going into economics, then you should be, uh, you should, start listening to you know news look start getting acquainted with what is happening around you and because that is what actually got me into economics you know listening to happenings around the world you know just seeing you know problems and thinking about oh why how can we solve this problem and what how can we solve that societal challenge uh, so if you if for a young person that is trying to get into economics i want to just say that interested in what is happening around because like we've said there are lots of uh, branches of economies that deals with everything that surrounds us so if, if you listen to the news you you're interested you go on youtube you look at um, simple economics um, uh, debates or economics uh, talks or economics discussion it kind of steers up your mind it kind of builds up the interest in you motivates you to be able to pursue that dream so you are you are not just going into economics uh, without knowing what economics is all about yes we've done some bit of it here but you need to kind of solidify that understanding by you know studying more doing a bit of more research on your own by listening more uh to talks and news shows and you know whatever cartoons you have about economics you see on youtube and um i, I think that's uh, for me that's one way to build your interest and i think other things will just follow naturally david do you have anything to add or yeah i guess i would say um very much like what latana said just keep talking to people um that are in the space keep attending events like this um, you know, YouTube is a, is a great resource, you know, simply just asking it, you know, what is economics? I'm sure you'd find, you know, loads of videos on there. But yeah, no, attending attending talks like this, talking to people who, you know, potentially are, are, are in economics as well. Um, obviously, I would recommend studying economics at undergrad level if, if you're currently, you know, in, in, in sixth form. Um, and then I think very quickly once you are at university just making sure you can apply to as many um you know of all these internships and things that exist I, I, it's never too early even at school i think even even at this stage now there are many school leavers and six form um opportunities you know there are even opportunities not you, you don't necessarily even have to go down the university route there are many apprenticeship apprenticeship schemes that exist which you know i ha i also highly recommend I, I think the uk civil service has has one that's quite good um, where you can both work and you know learn at the same time if you don't want to, if university is not not your not the option that you want to go down so there are many many different routes so you, you won't you just need to get the information so that's why you know recommending talking to people you know doing research online like Lotana said also listening to what's happening around the world is also very helpful you know that economic news will always and only help you in terms of building your overall knowledge about how economics works so yeah, no, I'll definitely recommend um the what what I recommend, you know, like I said, listening to listening to to if you like podcasts, there are many podcasts on economics, for example. So yeah. Yeah, I mean I agree with David Amutana. I think I would just summarize and say at every stage in your academic career, try and always couple your your classroom learning with some sort of practical experience, whether that's an internship, apprenticeship, um, just even like um, I think they're called open days or where you can go into companies and learn more about it at every stage, whether it's your first year or you're in sixth form, always try and get some sort of practical experience because it helps with building your CV for your career further on. And it also shows a certain level of proactiveness and willingness to understand the wider world outside of your classroom. So that is what I will say. Okay, so let's do some audience questions for the last 10 minutes. 
Oh, this is an interesting question, David. So this one is regards to what you said about how you think it's, it's it's more diverse now. If you go to university, you can find people who look like you. You wouldn't be a like you wouldn't be an anomaly. So um, Kevin or Kevin is asking, do you think the economics curriculum has been essentially diversified as much as the demographic of people studying economics? Unless it doesn't say here, but I would assume maybe in the UK. That's a very good question. So. I would cheat by saying implicitly it has by the sheer reason and, and my evidence for that, even though it's only one sample, but obviously it applies. I know many other people like Lotana. Lotana is a senior lecturer at the university. And you know, there are many now, many, you know, lecturers who are from different backgrounds who are part of the process of creating the curriculum for their respective courses, right? Now. So implicitly, that diversity of thought should be shining through in, in the curriculum. That said, um, there are constraints. I mean, you cannot just change what economics is. Um, and I'm, I'm sure even Lutana has, you know, a constraint in which, you know, he can he can create his he can create his slides and, and his curriculum. Um, and I I also actually do do teach uh, at Bristol and I work with the lecturers to also create create content. So. In, in, in an implicit way, like that diversity of thought is coming because, for example, I provide my opinions about creating the content. So in an implicit way, yes, but I guess fundamentally there is still a mainstream economics that is, I guess, you know, through just many years, many years in history entrenched in thinking about the perspective of an economy or models that are better suited to like, say, the US economy, not even, I think even, even just the UK, even just Europe versus US, even there, there's diversity is not that great. Talk less of like, um, I guess the the other countries. So, I I'd say there has been improvements, and I think something that schools have been doing actually very good is they have been updating their curriculums a lot faster these days than than back back in my time. Um, from what I've seen, in that you know, as each year progresses, they have a look at what you know the world is needing. Do people need data skills, for example? Let's add data to the course. So I think. Schools are, uh, and universities are becoming a, a lot more responsive to how the world is changing. But I guess in terms of mm -hmm. diversity, like I said, implicitly, yes, through more people like me being involved in the process, but explicitly, I guess there's still a lot of work to still be done in terms of what mainstream economics is. Okay. Interesting. Well, Tana, do you have anything to add working in academia? Oh. Yeah, I mean, David um, has kind of um, uh, put a closure on that because I think he made the, he hit the right notes. Um, uh, we are trying to decolonize the curriculum, but uh, there are things you cannot really decolonize in terms of uh, landmark um, theories and landmark research. You know, you can't just change them and say you want to bring in uh, African something or something. Economics, there are some things in economics that are still, uh, you without them, it's like economics is not, there are pillars in economics. But in terms of application, okay. what we try to do is in terms of application, we now pick our examples or case studies for applications from diverse um, uh, cultural, uh, societal um, angles so that we can be more inclusive. I think that's uh, what we're trying to do to decolonize the curriculum so that in terms of application, but in terms of the theory, uh, I don't think we can do anything much about that. Uh, so just the foundation, the foundational theories, just how we apply them, we can apply them for a more diverse group of examples. That's really interesting because I haven't really looked into it or ever thought about it. So that was a really interesting question. Thanks, Kevin. So the next question is from Abby, and she says, can you tell us about some role models that you had in your education slash career? So I'll go, I'll go first. I had loads of role models and it's weird when I get this question, I can't think of one off the top of my head. So yeah, I'll take a moment to think about it. David, <laughs> do you want to go? Yeah, I mean, I, so I'm, I'm Nigerian, um, and so I have a few top Nigerian economists that you know that I that I often look up to, um, you know, and you know some people like Nkojo Ewela, who was a who was a previous um, minister of finance in Nigeria. Um, so I do have people like that that I look up to, look at their careers. Sometimes I go there with to see what they're up to, um, follow them on on the social network to see what they're up to. So. Yeah, I find that, you know, it's good to have, I think it's good to have role models like that. And I, I, I think you can have different type of role models. Some that 
you can actually and like discuss with people who are like close in proximity to you. But I think it's also nice to have role models that don't even know who you are. Like you're just you know looking at their career so far and just dreaming your own path by you know seeing what they're what they're doing. Um, but yeah, I have I have quite a few quite a few like that. Um, but yeah, I I mostly look at like top economists that come from come from Nigeria on my side. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Good. Uh, yeah. For me, I think um, I my role model is uh, one of them is at uh, Otto Lewis. Uh, Otto Lewis. Um, I think coincidentally, the building where I studied at the University of Manchester was called Otto Lewis Building. Uh, Otto Lewis is the first black professor, the first black professor in the UK, and he happens to be a professor of economics, uh, a professor of development economics. So it's back to economics is not just money and finance, development economics. So he was the first black professor in economics and the first, uh, so he, he, he's done some groundbreaking works. He's late now, you know, but he got, uh, he received the Nobel Prize in economics in 1979. Uh, and then um, he, he's 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 been honoured with lots of um uh, national awards or honours in the United Kingdom and even outside the United Kingdom. So he's a well respected uh black professor of economics and like I said, the first the first black professor in the United Kingdom, not in economics in all discipline, and it happens to be from economics. Uh, so uh, that's someone that I kind of look up to. Yeah, it's really good. For me, I'll just make it quick because we're running out of time. Probably one of my biggest role models is Sheryl Sandberg. Um, she used to see level executive previous at Facebook. And essentially, she I look up to her just because of she's done a lot of advocacy for women in tech and getting women in those spaces. And the next one I could think of at the top of my head is probably Ngozi Ukwinjo. I can never sound her name, Vela. <laughs> but she's essentially like a leader of the World Trade Organization. And just to see a black woman get to like such a position was just extremely inspiring and she did a talk at the LSE I think a couple months ago which I got to go which was just extremely inspiring to just hear her talk and yeah to just be in that space so the last question hopefully we'll try and get this into as quick as we can um it's from City Academy it says can you tell us more about what your current former jobs as economists involve on a day-to-day -day basis like practically how like a day in the life almost okay i i can go i'll use probably my time in government um so on a day-to-day -day basis it's a combination of two things one i'm talking with a lot of policy makers so it could be policy analysts could even be ministers um and even got to talk with the pm once um and basically what what we do is as economists we do research um and then the point is to try and explain what that research is to the politicians or to the policy the policy makers or the policy analysts so just trying to talk them through what would happen under different scenarios depending on what they do um what economically at least is the best option to take based on our research so that was one part of my day-to-day -day. then the other part of my day-to-day -day will be to do that analysis so do different types of analysis most times on like Excel, um, do a lot of reading, research, and the calculations to figure out answers to questions depending on where, what type of project I was on. So like I said before, you know, it was something, for example, as if we import more beef into the UK, what would the impact be on UK businesses, on people across different income levels, or the impact be on different regions in the UK? So doing that analysis as well. So a combination of both talking to people and explaining economics, I think, Communication is not becoming a very big thing in economics, actually. I think it's one thing to know economics, but explaining it properly is, is a very big deal right now. So yeah, that was my day to day. Yeah, oh, okay, let me quickly go uh, in 30 seconds. Or... So my, I teach, uh, I teach uh, students economics and then I also do research in economics. So I look at what problem is facing, what problem is the society facing, uh, more especially in terms of um, the environment, in terms of um, uh, food supply chain. Economically, I do research and I also advise um, government as well as uh, policymakers uh, on uh, just like exactly what David also does. So from my research, I write j papers, um, journal articles, I write blogs, I write uh, opinion pieces for government, for international agencies, for national agencies, just to tell them what my what I found and the best um, 
approach they can take in terms of uh, optimizing the resource they have and getting the greatest good for the greatest number of people. Uh, so basically, that's so teaching, research, and uh, public uh, service. That's what I do. Okay. Thank you. So we have reached the end of the event. And just before everyone goes, we have one more poll. So please, please, please fill that in. Um, and make sure you check out Discover Economics and Social Media at Discover Econ on Instagram and Twitter. And you can, I think the team is putting links to our, the website and the social media accounts. Make sure you check those out to get to know more events that Discover Economics put on and just to learn more about what the campaign does um, as a brand and campaign. But yeah, thank you so much, David. Thank you so much, Zatanna. I have enjoyed this conversation. Um, thanks for having me discover economics and hopefully we have been able to give everyone some sprinkle of what we do and please study economics shout out to economics <laughs> so um yeah uh i will say we're good All right thank Thanks, you everyone. thank you everyone yeah, thank you everyone and thank you for joining and hope to see you in economics someday <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye.